So this video is going to cover interferons and natural killer cells. Um, and we're not going to go into too much into detail into those topics, but we definitely need to cover them when we're talking about the immune system. So here I've drawn a virus, and I've drawn four normal human cells. Right? Then they're not infected. Oh, but now that first cell is infected. So um, during a viral infection, there is a mechanism by which cells can be put in an antiviral state. So that's first going to involve cells detecting an infection and then communicating to other cells to put them in this antiviral state. So if a virus infects a cell, many viruses uh, during their life cycle produce lots of double-stranded RNA. And as we mentioned in a previous video, uh, toll-like receptors, some of them are present in the inside of cells that can detect molecules that are made by pathogens or that are present inside a cell. So toll-like receptor 3, for example, detects double-stranded RNA. And if the cell detects, oh, I'm infected, I've got a virus inside me, it can send a signal into the nucleus to make a signaling molecule called interferons. And so now we're talking about type 1 interferons. These are known as interferon alpha and interferon beta. Um, there are actually a couple more for, uh, versions as well, but these are the ones we're going to talk about. So interferons are cytokines that interfere with a viral infection. How do they interfere? Well, they're released by virally infected cells. So the cell number 1 knows it's infected by a virus because of the TLR signal. And the cell number 1 releases interferons. So where are interferons going to go? They're going to bind interferon receptors on neighboring cells. So cells 2, 3, and 4, they're not infected. They're going to get a signal via interferons, alpha and beta. And so when interferons bind the interferon receptor on uninfected cell, it puts these cells in what we're going to call an antiviral state. And I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty of the antiviral state, but I will mention a few things that happens during the interferon response. Um, first of all, uh, the uh, cell goes into a, a defensive mode where if any um, pathogens get inside and start producing lots of double-stranded DNA, the cells will make enzymes that will immediately destroy double-stranded uh, RNA. Um, viral proteins... Um, when they're made in the cell, they are made slightly differently than cellular proteins. And so the cells actually have a way to try to stop that from occurring. So mechanisms to inhibit viral protein productions will go up in these cells. And the last one, viruses replicate slightly differently than uh, human DNA. So vir these cells are going to try to inhibit any viral genome replication. So, like I said, I'm not going to go into the detail on how this occurs, uh, and you don't need to know the detail, but just knowing that interferons, the type 1 interferons, alpha and beta, they're released by virally infected cells, and typically cells know they're infected because of engagement of TLRs, the internal TLRs, and interferons are released from the virally infected cells and tell uninfected cells to go into this antiviral state. So that's type 1 interferons. Type 2 interferons, um, we're going to see, are going to be released by cells called NK cells, or natural killer cells. So here I'm going to draw some more. Here's a cell infected by a virus releasing interferon alpha and beta. So what interferon alpha and beta can do, another thing they can do that's part of the immune response, the interferon response specifically, is they can signal to NK cells, or natural killer cells. So natural killer cells are lymphocytes. If you remember what we talked about in Chapter 1, there are three types of lymphocytes, main classes of lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, or B cells, which are going to make antibodies. T lymphocytes, or T cells, which are going to encompass helper cells and cytotoxic T cells. And NK cells, natural killer cells, also lymphocytes. And their function is not as well un as understood as B cells or T cells. So we're going to talk a little bit about them, but I'm not going to go into great detail, like I said, because uh, the mechanism of action for NK cells is not as well understood as B cells or T cells. So I'm not actually going to expect you to know a lot about NK cells, but you should know of them. 
And so this is what you should know. Interferon alpha and beta will bind and activate NK cells. And what NK cells do is travel from the bloodstream into inflamed tissues where macrophages are releasing cytokines, such as IL-12. We'll see that shortly come into play. And when NK cells enter an inflamed tissue, uh, they're going to do two things. They actually do more things. I want you to know these two things. So first of all, NK cells can recognize if a cell is infected by a virus. How does it recognize it? Well, I might touch on that mechanism in later uh, unit, in unit three, when we talk about T cells, because it's complicated. But NK cells can recognize if a cell is abnormal. And this is uh, why NK cells have been talked about in terms of killing virally infected cells as well as cancer cells. So if there's something ab abnormal on the surface of the cell, NK cells can detect that but we're not going to go into detail about it right now. If NK cells detect something abnormal, it can, it can, not always, but it can, kill that infected cell, and that would be great. So that's one thing NK cells can do. The other thing NK cells do, it could do is they can help macrophages. So there's a macrophage in this tissue, and it's releasing cytokines. Let's say it's detected an infection, and it releases TNF-alpha, and IL-1, and IL-6, it's releasing another cytokine called IL-12. IL-12 helps activate NK cells. So macrophages release IL-12. They're going to bind receptors on NK cells and get NK cells to release uh, cytokines to help kill infected cells, do great things. Another thing that NK cells do is they release a different type of interferon known as interferon gamma. That is a type 2 interferon. So interferon gamma works differently than interferon alpha and beta. Interferon gamma's main function in the immune response is to stimulate macrophages. So we've talked about macrophages before. They're phagocytes, right? They have receptors on their cells. Um, they can release cytokines. But macrophages um, can be put in a much more uh, attack mode kind of state. And we call that macrophage activation. And so the way macrophages are typically activated is because they get hit with interferon gamma. Interferon gamma can come from a number of different places. One place that can make interferon gamma are NK cells. So here's an NK cell releasing interferon gamma, which is going to bind receptors on macrophages. And it makes macrophages more efficient in phagocytosis and destruction of pathogens, as well as secreting cytokines. So this macrophage is going to go into high gear, phagocytosing, destroying, and releasing cytokines. And you actually have this little positive feedback loop that occurs, because now the macrophage will make more IL-12, which will stimulate NK cells to make more interferon gamma, and you're going to have these two cells helping each other. So macrophages can help NK cells, NK cells can help macrophages. So that's a little bit on interferons, alpha and beta, and interferon gamma, and a little bit on NK cells. There could be a lot more we could talk about in these two topics, but uh, I have to pick and choose what you're going to learn in this course, and we're going to stop there at least for um, interferons and NK cells. There might be a video in a later unit on NK cells.